September 12, 2018, about three and a half years ago, the iPhone XR came out in six different colors. White, black, baby blue, yellow, coral, which is the one that I have, and the product red one, which actually looks really nice. Now, what about the design? The iPhone XR has glass on the front and back, and it has a 7000 series aluminum frame, which is cheaper and less durable than the stainless steel edges like on the iPhone XS. The reason why they did this was so that they could get the aluminum to be in these nice and flashy matte colors. I'm looking around on the left side of the iPhone, we have the volume buttons and the silent mode switch, and then on the right side we got the SIM card slot and then the power button, as you can see right here. They've actually since increased the size of the power button on newer iPhone models. On the top we got absolutely nothing and on the bottom we got a lightning connector which they've been using for almost 10 years now and we got the microphone and the speaker. What about the screen? Before the release day I saw so many people bashing the screen on the iPhone XR because it's an LCD display that isn't even 1080p resolution and that has the same amount of 326 pixels per inch as the iPhone 4. The screen has a brightness of 625 nits, which is good enough for seeing your screen outside on a nice bright day, but it's no match for the thousand nits that's in the OLED iPhones. The resolution of the screen is 828 progressive, which is more than good enough, and it's really hard to discern pixels unless you're pixel peeping really, really hard. Because the screen is an LCD screen, the bezels are going to be thicker because the screen is actually based on an older technology. The speakers on the iPhone XR? sound pretty good. It uses a dual speaker setup, which uses the main speaker, and it also uses the phone speaker up top. Pretty weird setup, right? But this phone speaker up top actually does a pretty good job of being the other speaker. And it actually sounds so much better than just having one speaker and not anything else up top, which is quite jarring compared to the nice series speaker setup. The speakers normally sound clear in normal listening volumes, but it can get treble heavy when you turn up the speakers, just like any other phone speaker. Oh no! The storage on my iPhone is filling up really fast! The amount of storage on my iPhone is 64 gigabytes, and while that's okay for normal use, I record videos a lot, and that could take up a lot of storage, especially when I'm recording at higher resolutions such as 1080p 60 and 4K 24. If you're going to get this iPhone, 64 gigabytes is only for people who use their phone normally, and obviously I'm not one of those people since I filled mine up in just a few months. 128 gigabytes is storage starting to become a lot of storage, and 256 gigabytes plus is just starting to become overkill. I saw some people only use 140 gigabytes out of 256 of them. Anyway, now the battery life of the iPhone XR is pretty good. It's a huge step up from the iPhone Success, which I had before. When I got my iPhone XR, my iPhone Success had 72% total capacity. This particular iPhone 6S here has 73% total capacity. And my iPhone XR actually had 94% total capacity. It normally gets me through the day and then still have 30% battery left in it for the next day. My iPhone 6S would literally die after three hours of use. Actually, it's at 1% right now. The iPhone XR's camera is pretty good and is quite similar to the camera on the iPhone SE 2. The iPhone XR has a 12 megapixel back camera and a 7 megapixel front camera. The front camera can record from 720p to 1080p, with the highest FPS you can record being 60 FPS. That 60 FPS action. Ooh. And the back camera can record from 720p to 4K resolution, with the highest FPS being 240, which enables you to slow down your 240 FPS videos all the way down to 10 times slower, down to 24 FPS. Now, portrait mode is not going to be as good on the iPhone XR as it is on the iPhone XS, because the iPhone XS actually has a dual camera setup, and it can measure the distance of faraway objects based on the distance of the two cameras, which is something that the iPhone XR cannot do because of its one camera layout. So portrait mode only works if there's a face 
in the scene. And then your phone kind of just guesses where you, like your hand and the rest of your body is. But it does a pretty good job of that. Same with the front camera. So one of my conclusions, the 10R is a nice cheap option so you can get nice battery life that will get you through the day and a screen that is good enough for video consumption and gaming. You don't need the iPhone 15 S Plus Pro Max 6G to do everything. And just because this is an old phone doesn't mean that it's a bad phone, but you should only upgrade if your battery is horrible. Anyways, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you loved it, please subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye!